Four two commander of the Royal Marines moved into the dangerous Nad Ali North District of Helmand Province four months ago. The commandos have been tackling the Taliban head on ever since. It's an attempt to stabilize the area, particularly this village of Loimanda, a former Taliban stronghold. Now, liberated by the Marines, the village is being rebuilt to be given back to the people, the ordinary Afghans who just want to get on with their lives. <laughs> but now, increasingly, the Marines are handing over security to the Afghan army and police, not only in Loimanda, but throughout the region. They'll stand up with anybody, insurgents, Taliban, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. And I suppose there's an element of who are we to tell them what to do and how to fight. Because yeah. you know, they can't fight. Yeah. <laughs> this week, I go on partnered patrols with the Royal Marines and the Afghan Army. As well as a joint airborne operation with the British commandos and the Afghan National Police. I'm pretty confident that we've done all we can to make it go well, but... Uh, no plan survives contact. Up to now, I've been based here in the bandit country of Nad Ali North. It's dangerous in these parts, with the Royal Marines still flushing out insurgents. This village of Loimanda, until a couple of months ago a Taliban stronghold, has been liberated, but much of it still lies in ruins. I'm now going on a short trip of just seven miles to Nad Ali South and a place called Shorkat a village that's also been liberated from the Taliban and, like Loimanda, left in ruins. But that was just over a year ago, and in that time, something remarkable has happened. Hi, how are you? How are you? Hi, good. This is uh, Shortcut, where 4-5 Commando are operating. Uh, this is much more benign down here, so very different in atmosphere, buzzing, vibrant markets, people out shopping, tractor repairers, it's all happening. And it wasn't long ago that this was as deserted as the bazaar at Loimanda. It's an astonishing fact that here in Nad Ali South, just a few short miles from Loimanda, where battles are being fought on an almost daily basis, not a single shot has been fired in anger for the last six months. The Me Too over here, the people were not confident. Uh, we're providing them security. Um, and with that security, it comes progress, as you can see up there. I mean, this is, this is everything we're dreaming of. This is, this is transition. This is us uh, bringing this place forward after 10 years. They can look here and they can see their look. You know, this is not a complete basket case. You know, this country does need help. This country does want to move forward. And, 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 and that, that is what's happening here. You know, that, that is what's happening. And I, I truly believe in that. Yeah. You know, I've spent a lot of time here and I've seen it go from bad to better to where we are now, you know, as moving forward. To the You're going to be the cover man. Uh -huh. So when the vehicle comes in... Uh -huh. Here, the Royal Marines, as part of ISAF, the International Security and Assistance Force, are spending an increasing amount of time training up the Afghans, particularly the overstretched Afghan police. Relax, relax. <laughs> ah. Excellent. I have found a um, pressure plate of IEDs. But it's not only the Marines providing this training. Very good, that. A few miles away at a place called Nayadullah, Bill and Kenny, British cops, are back in Afghanistan for the second time. If it wasn't safe here, we wouldn't be here. I've felt safer here than on the Slug streets of Glasgow sometimes. You know, it's it's OK. You know, it's, it's a strange thing to say, but, I mean, sometimes, yeah, they will look after you once you've formed that relationship with them and, and, and you've got some trust. 
and they know why we're here. Uh, they, they will look after us. We have disagreements, just like we do in our job back at home, you know, about their policing methods, about the prison handling sometimes. Uh, but that's what we're here for. And they'll go off on one, they'll walk off, or won't refuse to speak yeah. to us, but then the next day they'll say, I'm sorry, yeah. and they'll do what, we, what yeah. we'd advise. I think it would be in the Ramadan, and he's, he's absolutely... Certainly, the British way of doing things doesn't always coincide with the Afghan way. Right now, Bill is going to attempt to take some Afghan police out to man a vehicle checkpoint. Tom is just going to go forward and call Raj Mohammed out, who's the, the, uh, the sort of commander here. Right. And uh, hopefully he'll come out and we'll get them NG'd up. As I say, they're not, uh, not the greatest timekeepers, so we'll probably have to G them along. Abdul Bari? Where's Abdul Bari? Bari in He's gone outside. He's gone outside, is he? And where's Abdul Bari? So they're both gone. No one is here. OK. Right, has he got a uniform? But he's going to make really fix guys for, for us. Right, we need guys in uniform, and that's who knows that, do we? So, timing is, is out again, but hey, if we get a result, that's, that's what counts. How are you? Is he going to get in uniform? Yeah, he's fucking talking about Tell him to go and get dressed. <laughs> Cover himself up. Okay, okay. Talk. Is he coming out on the VCP? just got to see the Colonel to, to reiterate about a Ranger. Come on, the VCP? They don't have Ranger right here. But he heard the expression herding cats. I'll show you. I know all about herding cats, mate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've got a, I'll show you a video to get back. Um, Tom, come on, we'll, we'll, we'll go over and see if G this ranger. Gonna go over. The plan is fast unravelling. Bill will have to take this to the Afghan police commander, known as the Colonel, before the whole thing collapses in disarray. A little bit of a, a bit of a gaggle at the moment. And uh, so we're gonna try and get the Colonel to confirm this for us. But be prepared, he might be in bed. Okay. Bill is directed to the colonel's office. First on the right, just past the marijuana plant. Yeah. And the colonel's office. Let's go see him. The colonel's office is very spacious and airy, if not that well appointed. Hello, Maslam. How are you doing? Good, Maslam. Alaikum. He's the precinct commander. Yeah, good commander. Colonel, when we spoke earlier about the VCP, the guys are all running around in circles, don't know what to do. Oh, timing is everything. So how is the, the colonel's fasting? More after, after yeah. taking my fast. Yeah. The colonel, like everyone else, is taking it easy. That's because it's Ramadan, so nothing must be eaten or drunk between sunrise and sunset, not even water and it's over 40 degrees today. Colonel, thank you very much. Manana. Uh... All it took was a few words from the Colonel, who has clearly had some experience in herding cats. <laughs> this is about as efficient as we get. You can't, dis you can't sort of shout and scream as you might do at home. No, not at all. It's not going to work. It's... Some people try it out here. Uh... It's not a wise thing to do. I mean, what we've got to remember is it's their country. Uh, they're going to be doing the job. And, and the, the big benefit is them actually getting up and doing it. Whether it's 15 minutes late or not, they're actually going out and they're doing it. Um, but when it comes to the job, there's mm. no lack of courage in what they do. Not at all. In fact, they're, they're often first on the front line. If they get a shout from here, they're up and gone. You know, they're in the, they're in the Rangers and they're away. And they'll lay along before ISAF, which is only natural because, they, 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 you know, they don't have the same caution. They don't have the same uh, health and safety um, thoughts in their head. They just want to get there and, and see these people off. Insurgents, Taliban, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. So the courage is there and the bravery. And there's real risk to them, isn't there? Well, uh, the attrition rate for these guys, a lot of people don't realise, is, you know, you're talking over a 1,000 police officers a year on average in most, most years. But the reaction of these guys is they get on with it. They use the term God's will, inshallah, and off they go. 
How are we doing, Dom? Yeah, yeah, really good. Yeah. They came out, set up just how we talked them, so yeah. it's good. Excellent. We need police is about interacting with the public. That's the overriding thing we're trying to convince these guys of. You know, we tell them to go out patrol, go out at prayer time and go and pray with the, with the, the locals. The, all we hear is the, the sort of bad stories where, they're, 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 you know, they're taking their goods and not paying for them, and that still happens. I mean, they're out on patrols and it's, it's witnessed on a, an almost daily basis by ISAF. If they're going through a field, they pick up a few melons, you know, and the old farmer's shaking his fist at them like we talked about before. But, um, you know, it, it's where they live and it's what they do. Um, and if we can rub that out of them and say you shouldn't be doing that to the, the people, you know, they shouldn't do that to the people. Try and get that into them and, and you know, the people will help you. You can turn the people very, very easily. Quite optimistic. We'll wrap it up now. That's it, finished. Nobody is trying to turn Afghan policemen into British bobbies. It's not about that. But it is about instilling confidence, discipline and lifting morale. Well done, guys. Stay come on. It's been a difficult day. A lot of that has been to do with the fact that it's the middle of Ramadan, a holy month of fasting. It's significant, though, that the Taliban won't be fasting. They are exempt because they consider they're waging a holy war against infidels. And that would include the Afghan police. <laughs> This helicopter is bringing in the body of an Afghan policeman killed just two days ago in the line of duty. What's happened there? Uh, unfortunately, uh, day before yesterday, one of the AUP was killed and we're bringing his body back for his family to be buried in duress. Kenny knew this policeman well and had helped to train him. Yeah, I'll take a handle. It's chilling to learn that in the country as a whole, 1,200 police officers are killed every year. That's 100 a month. I've got it, I've got it, I'm OK. So we're returning the body to be buried with his family. Yeah. You're here to show your respect. Of course, yeah, as a fellow police officer, um, they'll try and take it off me, but I'll, I'll, I'll take him all the way, yeah. right, because they're the same as us, they're civilian police, and they're, I'm very passionate about this, especially when the officers are killed. So I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Throughout the world, you know, so a police officer gets killed, we feel the same thing because we do the same job. OK, we have different levels of professionalism, but at the end of the day, they're police officers. Same with these guys. I find Kenny's attitude incredibly touching and his grief for the dead policeman very moving, indicating a side to the Afghan conflict one seldom hears about. I leave Kenny, Bill and the AMP and head north, with only about five miles to another Royal Marine base called Kamar. Again, this area is much safer than it used to be, though not yet fully secure. Here, the ANA, the Afghan National Army, is being prepared to take over from ISAF forces when they go. OK, we're going to do a few bits, and your medic is going to show exactly how to deal with a casualty when they go down in the field. OK, blood will be spraying out. It will be getting in your way and putting you off. So just start screaming. Oh, my leg! leg! Oh. Although natural fighters, soldiers of the ANA have suffered from lack of equipment and poor discipline for a long time, as well as being riven with intertribal jealousies. We've got the ANA to a point where they've got uh, subject matter experts of their own who can do the training. They'll still need a bit of stirring from the, uh, steering from the ISAF, but what we've got now is a position where they're respected among their own peers. Good, good. From a very simple point of view, looking at the patrols that they're taking out, they're taking them out and they're wanting to go out on their own. It's a world away from what we were in the past where it was we were leading them and sometimes you know pretty pulling them into the directions that we wanted to go and they had a no real understanding of it. Now they've got a full understanding of how you dominate ground and how you uh, give people security and we're at a point now where I'm quite happy to let them go on the ground on their own and I know that they will not cause any problems and they will make the people feel safe and that's what we're here for.
Who's going to help him put him on the stretcher? Everything the ANA is taught has to be shown by example, because only 14% of them can read Come or on, write. Keep going. All the way to the end! Training these men to stand alone by 2014 is an immense task. Yeah! Everybody on the losers' team, on that side, because you're doing press-ups. <laughs> One wonders just how many press-ups will be required to prepare the ANA for what's ahead. <laughs> Every evening, there's a radio roundup between the various Royal Marine checkpoints in Nad Ali to set out the next day's patrol plan. A J3, your ground domination patrol. One call sign must remain on the ground at any one time to dominate the areas of Whiskey 5 X-Ray and Whiskey 5 Mike. This is to be partnered, coordinated instructions to follow. Increasingly, the patrols going out are partnered. ANA and Royal Marines together. A 4-1 Delta, conduct depth protection for 4-1 Hotel. This is to be partnered. Understand the depth and the type of intimidation reported in Nikilabad. This is to be partnered. How's the training, Commander? Very good. Very good. Yeah, some medical. There is training. also a nightly meeting with the ANA commander to clarify plans. To say what will we do tomorrow? Right, that's what I came to chat to you about, uh, Commander. <coughs> and I was going to ask you if you wouldn't mind coming with us to Shual Bazaar tomorrow morning and the area around the bazaar as well. Junub Sharq for Balota Magad Maniwali. He doesn't want to go to Shual. He wants to go south and east. We can persuade him to go to Shual yeah. if you'd like. Okay. Gazma Shao as no Mohammed. Shao? Uh, aft. So six till eight, we want him to do a uh, patrol in the evening tomorrow, and uh, he thinks he's got a patrol in the morning. This is one of the few frictions that we get. Sometimes the, it's lost in translation, so we don't always get all the information that we. we need to do. Show, Because this area, I'm just concerned that we've been using this area a lot. Yeah. And there has been three three IEDs in there in the last week. They have probably better human than we can provide because they understand the people very well, and uh, the information that they give us is quite fantastic. Uh, they do it a different way to us, um, but they get the results quite a lot of the time. And they found an ID only last week, and he's got ideas uh, ideas about another ID uh, from his um, his jasuses, which is spies, basically that he has. Reference the um, the compensation for the lady. Next on the agenda is a very bizarre problem. There was an incident the other day where a lady um, uh, unfortunately got bitten by a dog, but it was initially thought, because ISAF had shot a dog, because it was coming in to attack them, that uh, the shots had ricocheted and hurt her because she came out bleeding. Found out later on that she'd only experienced uh, an attack from that same dog. Amid the confusion, though, ISAF agreed to pay the woman compensation in the form of a goat. And that's where the real problem started. The ANA commander said it was far too small and supplied his own. Because we bought some goat from for for them. We did, even yeah. though uh, even though our goat was small <laughs> compared to the size of the one you brought them. As Pastor for tradition, went over there to say sorry and offered her a goat um, on the advice of um, Lieutenant Abdul Rahim. I offered him 8,000 Afghanis to pay for the goat and he didn't think that was very much money. <coughs> He wanted 20,000 Afghanis, which is nigh on 500 pounds for a goat, which I just thought was a little bit too steep. He said that was really shame for us. She was scared. She bought a very small goat. It smelled like monkey. It smelled like monkey. He said he had a goat that was massive, and I'm not joking, it was the same goat. It's just the same goat, same size next to him. I can't understand where he's getting this idea he's got a massive goat somewhere. Crazy, <laughs> the Shatan. Shatan is evil, apparently, and I'm evil. I mean, I don't know how he's getting that, just because I wouldn't give him 20,000 Afghanis for a shagging goat. I mean, what's that about? Why is that? Hey! 
It's five in the morning, and I'm about to set off on a Royal Marine patrol to check a suspicious compound where unidentified fighting age males have been spotted. The compound uh, that we're going to search today, obviously, we don't know what's in there. We don't know whether it's been a, uh, um, a Taliban bed down location. It could be a weapons case, it could be anything. So we don't know until we actually go there and find out what it is. Right. Okay, thanks, Corporal. I've done a lot of patrols in the past few weeks, but this is the first time I'll be going on a partnered patrol. Royal Marines with the Afghan National Army. Um, what we'll do is, if you don't mind, we'll we'll lead it out there, okay? Mm. Uh, when we get to the compound of interest. Yeah? Okay, yeah, I think yeah. that's it, that's as similar as it's going to get. Okay, here we go, that's it. Okay, everyone, good to go? The first person we come across is someone who claims to be an off-duty policeman. He says he saw the Taliban last night. Information about that uh, perfectly. He said the Taliban last night came here and they had a great meal in here and they gone back. They had a meal? Yeah. All oh, right, okay. So they didn't have anything else on them, like any IEDs or anything else like that? So if I followed this tree line here, all the way up, is it the first compound I come to? The off-duty policeman insists on following us. This annoys the ANA, who asks for his ID card. What's going on now? He has doubt on him. He said that he is not an MP. This is not this picture. That's different. So he might be, probably, he might be insurgent and stuff like that. Right, be, uh, be honest with us, because otherwise you're going to get arrested. Where did you get your ID from? Yeah, you see that he changed their story, he changed the subject. Yeah, yeah, he be, yeah, before he said that I'm MP, now he said I'm border yeah. police. So you keep looking at me. Ah. Hey, he lost a bit of weight. Ah, sorry. He lost <laughs> a bit of weight there. Yeah, it is him. Yeah? Yeah, that's him. Have a look at his ears. It's exactly the same, one of them on his left hand side. Right. Problem solved. He is who he says he is, but a lot of time has been wasted. We need to get back on patrol, but now the ANA will lead and the Marines will follow. At least, that was always the plan. OK, then, if we uh, get your lads then, turn to push past our lads. When you get to that tree line, turn left. It's your first compound that you come to. Push to Bruma, I don't say go forward, I will be behind you. Sorry? He said that go forward, I will be behind you. We go forward? Yeah. No, because if anything kicks off, I don't trust them firing near us. Marines should be forward and we have to be behind them because we have no... We don't have much training about this and stuff like... Oh, you need to get to <sighs> stuff they come out with. If the ANA aren't going to do it, then we might as well do it, because I ain't got all day. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the ANA is saying they haven't got the training to do the job. Oh, yeah, they've got the training, they just can't be asked. Um, basically, all we'll do is we'll still use them in a, uh, obviously in a positive role. So what they'll do is they'll uh, give us cover over towards the east. Um, I'm not going to get anywhere here arguing with them. So at the end of the day, even if they just watch us doing it, they're going to learn something out of this. Are they happy? Louis reluctantly reassumes leadership of the patrol. OK, guys, what's going to happen is new plan. We'll head over towards the compound, speak to the owner, get him out, then we'll go off and search the compound. The ANA will be a bit difficult at the moment. They're uh, actually not helping us whatsoever here. I think we just scared the kids. Could you, uh, could you ask the kids to go and get their dad or someone? We stop at one house to ask if someone could show us the way to the suspect compound, which is somewhere nearby. Yeah, it's a big problem for me if I go with you guys so tomorrow I get a big trouble for me. Uh, the village people, the village people, the village people, the village the village people, 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 the people, the village people, the village people, the village people, the people, the village people, the 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 people
Uh, you see deer is awaiting right there uh, by Chanji. I want to take my family out there. See, do you see my new clothes? <laughs> oh, right, is that what it's about, is it? Well, tell him I hope you have a, uh, a nice wedding. I hope it goes well. Dear man, it's the last of how I got that. Four fair Roger, having a bit of a drama with the A&A &A and also this uh, local national, which just one thing after the other. Uh, but uh, Roger, I, I won't bother taking him then, uh, and then I'll head straight off now to uh, come out three five and conduct the search. See you then. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Of course, a transition isn't always that easy, as you've seen. Uh, dealing with the A and A, who are very new to some of this work, a little bit nervous. And of course, the locals equally as nervous uh, to be seen cooperating with ISAF forces sometimes. So uh, soldiering in this area is not just about dealing with the threat of the insurgents, but uh, it also involves an awful lot of diplomacy and an awful lot of patience as well. I'm just fed up. <laughs> Don't have that on camera. <laughs> At last, we reach the compound that needs to be checked out and searched. Louis has another go at persuading the ANA to take the lead. Well, I just turned around and said, instead of fucking around, I was just going to put them here. They can have arcs out towards the east, and we'll just go and do it just to save time. Because we're going to be out here all day, fucking arguing with them. The Marines go in first. There have been reports of unidentified fighting age males in this compound, once a known Taliban firing point. Two men emerge looking remarkably relaxed for desperate insurgents. What we'll do is then we'll just ask him some questions then. Yet again, the ANA are called forward to carry out the search. Eventually, they move forward. It's not been about lack of courage, just not knowing the strict procedures that ISAF has to observe. If you take him, he will walk in front of you around the compound, just take control of him. But it's also that some ANA simply don't like being told what to do. He said, I'm a, I'm a farmer, so this field belongs to me. I have to leave here. Yeah. The ANA complete their search in record time. Should I call him? Levy! So the uh, suspect compound has proved innocent, um, which is a result in itself. Nothing found. Well, except for one thing, one of the ANA soldiers uh, helped himself to a clump of marijuana, so uh, at, least, uh, at least somebody's happy today. On our way back, we take a shortcut across a watermelon field. More temptation than the ANA can bear. <whistles> The Marines stop the ANA, but it's just their way. Watermelons are seen as fair game. And if it's not the ANA taking watermelons, it's the local kids on the scrounge. I gave you chocolate before and you said it was melted, so you said oh, it was horrible. We, uh... Their parents tell us not to give them chocolate anymore because it rots their teeth. Oh, really? Yeah, so we give them toothpaste, but I don't think they use it. <laughs> Back to base after a seven-hour patrol. It's been a long day for the ANA, who will now enjoy the fruits of their labour. Fucking old. <laughs> I'm hanging out. <laughs> yeah, I'm not scared of a minute, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
This is a gigantic map. It represents about two square miles of desert, enemy territory, and the target area of an airborne operation tomorrow. A hundred men will be going in by helicopter at dawn. This is uh, an operation to go and uh, disrupt the enemy C2, their command and control elements, uh, out in the desert just north of the CP Salang. Um, so it's a reasonably complicated aviation inserted operation. It gets the heartbeat going a little bit quicker. It's the sort of thing the lads love though. And uh, if I'm quite honest, so do I. <laughs> this will be a joint operation, this time with the Afghan National Police. Right, uh, first of all, fellas, <coughs> welcome, of course, to our police friend, Mohammed Wali. It's great to see you here. Thank you very much for making the effort to come down and support us. As usual, with a helo insertion, I don't expect to have to get anyone up for this because we all know that our hearts are going to be beating a little bit faster. <coughs> but I offer you this, fellas. If you jump off that helo in such a hurry that you haven't thought IED, small arms fire, then this will go wrong. There'll be two or three hundred metres between each call sign, so it's all good patrolling stuff. Off we go. The entire plan is walked through, literally on the map. And also coordinating with these guys, so that actually the swathe of land that we cover is pretty, pretty bloody big. Okay. Like I said before, it's not very kinetic where we are here, and you do find yourself getting a bit uh, not not bored as such, but it does get a bit mundane sometimes. Just uh, patrolling out like 8k every day, like you know, twice a day, um, and nothing happening. So yeah, it's quite exciting going out there. But at the end of the day, at the start of this tour, I always said that uh, as long as I get all my black lads back alive, that's the main thing. Tomorrow morning, nice straight lines. I'm pretty confident that we've done all we can to make it go well, but uh, no plan survives contact. But at the end of it all, I want to go out there and bring my boys back in one piece and having done a good job. And um, so, of course, there'll be a bit of apprehension. It's four in the morning. The lads stoke up on a full English breakfast. The first helicopter comes in at five o'clock and the initial wave of commandos is quickly airborne. Everything going according to plan so far? Helicopters come in as expected? Yeah, and um, actually that's half the battle. It's making sure that the uh, helos turn up on time. There's a complex job, so uh, things don't always go as they should do. But they're, they're rolling on stream now, so hopefully it will be well. The flight is short and sharp, barely five minutes, but it takes us north of the Neb Canal with the Taliban unknown to hide. As we disembark, we brace ourselves for enemy contact. But in fact, the only Afghan we see walks straight past us, quite unconcerned by the sudden appearance of 50 British commandos armed to the teeth. Jay, call him over. Just have this book. Assalamu alaikum. The new tactic some good old British manners and politeness. I hope you don't mind us being here. Are you from here? Yeah, he lives here. Would you mind um, if some of our men came with you? Oh, yeah, no problem, yeah. And uh, this is this is your compound here, is it? Oh, 
this is one of my uh, one of my sergeants, Sergeant Taylor. Salam, ya wasti do udumun ta bdarwo. Oh, fantastic. Reconnaissance helicopters tell us that many fighting age males fled into the desert as soon as our Chinooks came into view. If they were Taliban, they had no taste for a fight. We're going to keep eyes on it and um, just let it soak whilst we talk to the compound owners here. Good news is we found the compound owners, which means we can walk around with them. There's no need to be kicking down doors or any of that sort of business. Well, what's up there? What have you just found? We were searching the area um, and looked through that uh, little window there and found an anti-tank mine just sat on the floor. Just sitting there? Yeah. It's likely uh, because we want to move along, uh, we'll probably just mark and avoid it. Yeah. Ethan, it's literally a big fucking anti-tank mine sitting on the floor. <laughs> Brilliant country. There's a large anti-tank mine in the building just here. Uh, I wonder if uh, we can find out how it got there. What door is it? It's just in this building here. But then another building here. It's not been. Um, it's not been hidden. Jamal Mat, welcome. He said he's just going to figure out what it is. Okay, come on. I'd be. Uh, I, I would. Whoa. Come on. Give him a shout. Abdul, give him a shout now. Commander, I would just, uh, I would leave it. We've got some engineers that we can send in to have a look at it. Um, it might be booby trapped or something. Uh, we can have a look at it through the other window if you like, but I would leave it alone. Classic. <laughs> and this is where the AUP, where the police is so incredibly useful. Down the mortar, will they? He's saying, sir, like that's not a tank mine. We use it for, for, for a miller or to grind flour. I mean, we will turn it up. Flour. Bomb scare over. It's just an example of Afghan ingenuity. An old Russian tank wheel turned flour grinder. A modern take on swords to plowshares. <laughs> Have you got a cover man? Sharpie? Yo! Cover man, mate. Half a mile away, Louis' patrol is searching more compounds. <laughs> Can you just tell them that we're here to search their compounds? Just tell them so that we need, we're here to search their compounds. Have you tell them that? Tell them, tell them. Okay, what have you got? Tied up, it's a dog tied up. Open courtyard, we've got a dwelling to the rear, to the rear left. We've got female three kids in the left hand dwelling. <coughs> What have you found so far today? Uh, so far today, then, we've found some 762 shells on top of a roof, which obviously led to our suspicions that someone obviously has been uh, has been used as a firing point. Uh, then we found <laughs> an assault rifle. rifle, that was an AK-47, found that down a well. Also, digging up the field uh, to the south of the compound, uh, we also found, I'd say, about 40 kilograms worth of opium, so obviously it was enough to arrest the bloke. <laughs> <laughs> These guys over here are going to move around to cover from the uh, north. And you've got the sergeant majors group down there. The ANP then get the prisoner to carry the opium, something the Marines soon put a stop to, telling the police they must do the carrying. Not a popular order. We come to get off uh, to the roof from back of the compound. Uh, the more we search, the more we find. They've just pulled um, another few footballs worth of heroin out of the ground. From evidence being found all over the place, this is clearly a Taliban haven. But the enemy has quite simply disappeared.
An airborne operation by the Royal Marines with the Afghan National Police has frightened the insurgents away. So for Matt Parker, the commanding officer, it's afternoon tea on the lawn. Thank you very much for your hospitality. It's very kind of you to host us. <laughs> Says uh, from last 34 years we have in war, mm. and we haven't achieved anything from that war. No. But I think that's up to the locals to allow the government to exert its influence in these areas. Because if you stand up to the Taliban, and if your friends stand up to the Taliban, and your family stand up to the Taliban, then I think there will be lasting peace. <laughs> Do you know what, in the area that uh, we are from down in Shawal, the grip of the government is so strong down there now that the local population uh, are not swayed by threats from the Taliban because the Taliban have nothing to offer. In here we can't do anything. As you know, one day uh, we should leave because Afghanistan should be uh, not for foreigners but for Afghans. And so um, these are the brave men that will uh, look after your security when we've left. If the people know that we are here, they will come here. Why, what are they scared of? Are they scared of uh, the Taliban um, being angry with them if they're seen with us? Are they scared of us or are they scared of the Taliban getting in a fight with us and then being involved in it? Yeah. Yeah. But we are always um, very, very careful uh, when the Taliban shoot at us. They have confidence in you people. They have confidence. Yeah, because uh, they know that you are educated people. You won't f fire. I mean, fire them or shoot them. So they're scared of Taliban. Taliban will shoot them. Thank you. Thank you very much for your hospitality. It's lovely to meet you. Demanana. He seemed pretty genuine. The police normally can sniff when someone's telling the truth or not. You know, if everyone had the attitude that he has, uh, then you know, I think uh, winning over the local population would be a lot easier uh, than it than it is normally. We up since dawn and uh, swept across the whole area as planned. We found found some weapons. Found a whole stash of uh, opium and uh, at least one suspect. But significantly, uh, fighting eight males were just not to be seen. So we can only assume that they fled. But at least they didn't stand and fight. Uh, 4 3 Hotel, I acknowledge your last over. There are still pockets of bloody resistance in Helmand Province. But as this operation has shown, the insurgents increasingly would rather run than fight. Will this remain the case, though, in 2014, when foreign troops are due to leave Afghanistan? The Afghan soldier or policeman may not do things with the military precision of a Royal Marine, and his equipment may not be up to the same standards. But these sons of Afghanistan know the country better than anyone else and love it more than any foreign soldier. In three years, they will stand on their own. And only then, depending on the outcome, will we know if 13 years of war has resulted ultimately in victory or defeat. Next time, the Marines hand the first of Afghanistan's big cities back to the Afghan security forces. And after six months on the front line, the Marines of 4-2 Commando fly home to an emotional reception. Some, however, are returning from war to rebuild a life that will never, ever be the same again. Something military city walks.